From bomb cyclones to atmospheric rivers, it's just been one thing after another since we rang in the new year. We have been rocked by weather systems that are notoriously tricky to forecast. But lucky for us, the cavalry has arrived. The same military planes that fly into hurricanes are on assignment in Northern California. And you already know, the one and only Brandon Riddiman takes us aboard the Hurricane Hunters as they fly over the Pacific and into the eye of the storm. Loaded. Locked and each time this crew aboard the Hurricane Hunter plane makes a drop, scientists on dry land get more data over the Pacific. We're basically cutting across the atmospheric river right now. An atmospheric river moves 25 times as much water as the Mississippi River, streaming through the air out of the Pacific Ocean. Basically a fire hose precipitation. A fire hose pointed towards tens of millions of people on the West Coast. People who are already soaked. California started the year with rain that turned deadly. Floods from broken levees, widespread wind damage. That's what greeted the 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron when it arrived in Sacramento with four Hurricane Hunter aircraft. Usually based in Mississippi, these are special C-130 cargo planes tricked out to gather and transmit weather data. We were part of a small group of journalists allowed on board. Up in the cockpit, pilot Peyton Eustace is starting his eighth year flying for this unit. Just about the second year, or maybe third, doing Atmospheric River. It's a relatively new mission for us. Just like the name implies, we're used to seeing hurricane hunters over the Atlantic. They give us stunning visuals flying into the eye walls of hurricanes. We're not going to do that this flight. Even in this atmospheric river environment, we try to keep a distance from thunderstorms. But the mission is similar. When it comes to weather data, the Pacific can be a big blue black box. Our job is to collect data from these atmospheric river systems as they're approaching the West Coast. They do that using these drop zones, or SONs for short, which they shoot out the bottom of the plane. Once they shoot the drop zone out of this tube, it deploys a parachute. It'll take 12 minutes to fall all the way down to the ocean, sending data back up to the plane all the way. Pressure, temperature, humidity, wind speed, wind direction. And we're dropping 25 to 30 of those songs along our entire route today. Once that data comes on board, it's sent from the plane to the world by satellite. Within 10 seconds, it's already in the weather models to be used by forecasters and scientists like Anna Wilson, who studies atmospheric rivers. They aren't new, but we've um, only in the past few decades really been able to spot them with satellite. There's a lot of research ongoing to understand how atmospheric rivers may change with climate change. A lot of us out west grew up hearing about atmospheric rivers, but by a different name, the Pineapple Express, because of where many of them come from. We're basically halfway to Hawaii right now. Atmospheric rivers can actually happen all over the world, but their forecasted landfall can be off by two to 300 miles. It's also hard to predict the amount of rain and when it's gonna fall, all crucial information to keep reservoirs from flooding. Part of the trouble, the atmospheric river is around 10,000 feet and higher clouds can block satellite images, but SONs can punch right through, measuring even more information and studies show that data helps. We can have as much as 20% improvement in the precipitation intensity forecasts in the Pacific Northwest. I've been on a mission that's 12 hours, but uh, we enjoy anything less than 10, I'll tell you that. Hurricane hunters are used to long flights. They'll pass the time with push-ups over the Pacific for at least the next couple months. Brandon's with us now. Uh, you were flying from 9.30 to 7. Yeah. You throw up? Uh, nope, nope. <laughs> Actually, honestly, the turbulence wasn't that bad. Oh, my good. second time in a C-130, and this was the less choppy exercise. So you're a pro. They avoid, they avoid the storm system. We're going over it, which was nice. <laughs> now, how do we know that this is even working? So it was really interesting. Talking to the Scripps Institute, they said basically, you know, we, we talked about how this data goes into the models in real time. So they rerun those models, taking out the data they got from the planes, and they can see forecast wasn't quite as good without it. So that's one of the ways they're able to just really quickly spot check. And where are they doing this? Are they doing this in other places? Yeah, well, so there's a lot of activity over the Pacific right now. We have flights going out of Mather Field here in Sacramento, but there's also a plane owned by NOAA, the more comfortable plane. It's a Gulfstream instead of one of these big military <laughs> more comfortable planes. planes. Yeah, it, well, it is. Listen to this guy. <laughs> it's, 
I, the researchers tell me it's the more comfortable okay, plane, so. all right? Um, but you no, know, they're flying out of Hawaii. So they're covering kind of that zone of the Pacific, and then we're kind of getting the space between California and halfway to Hawaii with these flights that are coming out of here. And, and they're going north and south, too, depending on the need. All right, Brandon, thank you so much. Happy you made it back safely. We appreciate it. Me too.